So for as long as I can remember, it's always been difficult to start the CRX because of the clutch. Basically, I have to push that clutch pedal all the way till it bottoms out, like completely maxed out, and then the engine will crank. And if I move my clutch pedal just a hair while it's cranking, it completely stops the cranking sequence, and that's it, you gotta start over. When I had a look underneath there, I see something similar to this. Basically, there's two switches that are attached to the clutch pedal, and they should have little plastic buttons on them, just like this. And every time you move that clutch pedal, these buttons come up and they press on the switch. But you can see the thickness of this compared to the thickness of an actual button that should be on there. So my plan is to remove both of these that are on the clutch pedal right now and put these on there. These are the ones that belong on there. So actually I can show you guys at least the first one, the one that's easy to get to. There's the clutch pedal, I'm gonna go ahead and push it back. And you see what I'm talking about? There goes that little black push in. You see how it comes up and it pushes the plunger for that switch? Well, that little black push in should not be there. It should be those little white buttons that I just showed you guys. So that's the easy one. There's another one way up there somewhere, okay? And that one's a real pain in the butt to get to. So I was able to get the easy one out. You could see it came out in two pieces, which is fine by me. But with that piece out of the way, you can see how the plunger for the switch, there's nothing to press it now. It goes all the way through the pedal, you see it? And that's why you need these little plastic buttons here. So that part fit in there perfectly. Look, there it goes right there. You see it working? Can't ask for anything better. It just popped in, had nice tension on it, and it feels nice and solid inside of there. So here goes all of the pieces, and I got the new ones installed. So let's see if I have to smash in this clutch to uh, get the car started. So I'm just going to go ahead and push in the clutch normal. Start it right up. I don't feel like I'm smashing it all the way into the ground anymore. Let's try it again. Again, normal push on the clutch. Car starts right up. So everyone's happy. It seems to be working just fine now. My brake switch also has one of these for the brake pedal. So I've been having this issue with the CRX where it seems to be charging the battery at idle, but the second you raise the RPM and you start driving, it just drops down some battery voltage. And if you're driving long enough, obviously the alternator is not charging, so the car just dies. It only charges at idle, all right? So I had the car running here for about, I don't know, like 10 minutes. And then it's like the longer the car runs, it starts to sputter, sputter, sputter. And it just kind of sounds like it's misfiring. So I decided to go ahead and check the oil. And I got something that doesn't look good. All right, put the dipstick in, pull it out. First of all, it's way overfilled. Last time I did that oil change, I did not overfill this thing. On top of that, that does not look like clean oil, guys. That looks almost like a like milkshake -ish. You know what I mean? Like a milkshake. <laughs> I think you guys know where I'm going with this. If you look inside of here, we could see the oil that's on the valve train. It has like that almost like a mud type of texture. Um, yeah, I think the reason why it's misfiring and kind of sputters along is because this thing may have a blown head gasket. I've had this car for over a year, maybe even two years. I can't even remember guys. But in the time span that I've had this car, I haven't even put a hundred miles on it. It tells you how little I drive this car. Every time I fill this thing up and then I come and look at it, maybe a few weeks later, a few months later, it's always empty. I think I know where the coolant is going, so. <laughs> So the engine is still nice and hot, but I decided to pull out the spark plugs and it looks like cylinder four and cylinder one are nice and dry, but two and three right in the center. They are very wet. So I decided to uh, pressurize the cooling system and this is the second time I pressurized it and it's definitely dropping and I don't see any drips on the ground. I mean, it's not really a 100% valid test, but I want to see if uh, if there really is a head gasket leak and if it's severe enough that we could pressurize the cooling system and pump that coolant into the cylinder. Unfortunately, I couldn't really see anything. Um, so I got everything put back together. Let's go ahead 
and do what I said I was going to do, which is uh, start up the engine. Let's see if we get any air pockets coming out the cooling system. All right, so I added just a little bit of coolant so that it's actually in the funnel and we can see it easily. Now, idling, everything looks good, right? No bubbles coming out, but let's go ahead and raise the RPM and I'm just going to give it a few hits. All right, that was one blip of the throttle. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Now, I don't want to say definitive that it is a blown head gasket. Um, yeah, I'm not doing a head gasket on this thing, guys. Sorry, it's not, it's not worth it. I would honestly rather pay to have this thing towed to wherever the hell we're moving to rather than to put the money and the effort. That's the biggest thing. It's not about the, the parts because we all know the head gasket and whatever little gasket it's going to need while I'm in there. It's not going to cost a lot. It's the labor. I don't want to deal with the labor. And God forbid something breaks while I'm taking it apart. You get what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to do a head gasket on this thing. I'd rather pull this whole engine out before I do a head gasket. So even if we put aside the potential head gasket problem, there's something going on with this alternator. There's no reason why it should be charging at idle in the second you raise that RPM to anything. As soon as you hit that accelerator pedal, it just drops. There's no more charging going on. And like I said, if you're driving long enough without the alternator charging, the car just turns off on you. It really pushes me to want to pull this engine out of here. And guys, I know you guys are yelling at the screen. Just do it already. What are you waiting for? It's been forever. Uh, the reason why I haven't done it here is because this is like a one car garage when you consider all the crap that's inside of here. Okay. So I need this space to work on customers cars, make my money, make a living. Right. But once we move out of here, 98% of my customers are not going to follow me to wherever the heck we move to which means i'm gonna have a lot of free time which means this engine is coming out immediately um it just sucks because like let's just say we move an hour from here or two hours from here whatever the heck it is even if it's 45 minutes this car is not gonna make the 45 minute drive it just won't i know it won't because when i tried to take it to the bank the other day which is like five minutes away from here i almost got stranded with this thing uh because of the whole no charging uh deal so Unfortunately, it looks like this turd may have to get towed to wherever the heck we're moving to, and that really sucks. It just keeps costing me more money, you know what I'm saying? It's a few days later. I just turned the car on, so it's got a cold idle. You can see it's idling at 2,000 RPM, and it's still charging at 14 volts. So it's not really so much the idle. It's just more like whenever you hit the accelerator pedal, which sounds really weird. So I'm going to hit the accelerator pedal and watch that thing drop. Look, there it goes. No longer charging. And I'm just holding it at 2000 RPM. If I let go of it, look, it drops down to like 19 or 1800. And right back up to 14. But if I raise it from like 1800 just to 2000, just a hair. Right back to not charging at all. So, guys, I don't know what is going on here. This is a really weird problem i've never seen something like this so much to the point where i'm just shooting the parts cannon at it i bought another alternator and i got my fingers crossed that it turns out that the remanufactured 50 dollar alternator that i put on this thing it's just no good so this time i bought a hundred dollar alternator okay and that's pretty much in the top price range for the crx so it's a hundred dollar brand new one not remanufactured and I'm crossing my fingers that it fixes this charging issue. So it's a few days later and we got our new alternator in for the CRX. This is a Remy brand. I've used Remy before and I don't think, at least to what I could remember, I've had any issues with this brand. It's also not remanufactured. It's just a brand new unit, which is always uh, preferred. Um, honestly, I was stupid last time to go with a remanufactured because I see how many times these remanufactured alternators fail on customer's car i don't know why i tried to get away with it well that's what happens when you try to save a penny it costs you a dollar the last time i changed the alternator on this thing everyone was saying well why didn't you just remove the master cylinder it's way easier i don't to me it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do i'm not saying it's wrong okay i am saying it's wrong <laughs> 
I don't know, whatever. Are they referring to like just removing the master cylinder from the brake booster and moving the whole thing out the how it it's hard lined. It's got lines going to it. Are you expecting me to disconnect the brake lines? I'm not disconnecting brake lines to do an alternate. Screw that. You know, I, I don't understand where people are saying just move the master cylinder. On top of that, this car has a Integra brake booster on it so it sticks out much further. It has a Integra master cylinder so it sticks out further. It's a bigger unit overall. That means I have less space to work with. So even if I did remove this master, I disconnected the brake line so I could get the whole thing out of here. I'm not sure the alternator would fit through here because of the bigger Integra brake booster. I hope that makes sense. So guys, I'm not crazy when I'm saying just looking at this from me, I'm like, this doesn't look like it's going to work, at least from my application. The stock brake booster and master cylinder is much smaller on this car. So if you have the stock stuff, yeah, you might be able to get away with it. I'm sure plenty of people have done it that way. But I'm just going to do it the way I did it last time, which was uh, get the alternator off, pull it from the bottom of the intake manifold, and bring it out through right here. I might have to remove the throttle body, but that's about it. All right, so I got the new alternator installed. As you can see, the belt is tensioned. The bolts for it are nice and tight. Got all the connections for the alternator plugged in. I just have to go ahead and put all this stuff back together. Now, the back of the throttle body was pretty much caked up pretty good with carbon. So I took a little bit of time just to go ahead and clean this out. Nothing major, nothing fancy. Uh, just a little bit of time. The last time I was in here, I was in a hurry. So I didn't spend any time trying to clean this. I just put it back together how it was. So I'm pretty sure I got everything done. Everything is reconnected. Got the battery reconnected. Let's go ahead, start her up and see if this uh, alternator is charging. All right, start it right up. That should say 14 volts real soon. There we go, 13 and a half, 14. Alright, so the moment of truth, I'm gonna go ahead and raise the RPM and that should stay at 14 volts. And it's not. I think I just wasted $100 for an alternator for nothing. <laughs> what is going on with this car? Alright guys, so I just noticed something. Something that I didn't test with the old alternator because it just didn't occur to me. Um, so here's the thing. We know at idle, it's charging just fine. You can see it, right? And if I raise RPM, even a hair, you don't even got to raise it, you know, <laughs> just like 100 RPM. Right? I'm just going to flip the throttle. And look, instantly drops, right? It's no longer charging. But look what happens. So I'm just gonna hold the RPM up. We're still not charging, right? I'm going to turn on the headlights. Headlights are now on. And look at that. It's charging again. I'm still holding the RPM. Even if I hold it at 2000 RPM. We are still charging. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the headlights right now. Headlights are off, and look at that. It's no longer charging. Guys, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if the old alternator was doing the same thing. I'd, I'd have to bet that the old alternator was working fine. There's just something wrong with the car. So it's a few days later, and I decided to take the CRX out somewhere else. And again, guys, it just it's so unsettling. its You could tell it's just not reliable. <laughs> so here's the thing. I started to get out to where I was going and keep in mind, it's only like 15, 20 minute drive where I was going, okay? And the car actually turned off on me twice. I had to start it right back up. It like barely wanted to start, of course, cause it was draining the battery. And here I am just to be able to get back home. I'm doing my little trick of, uh, you know, turning on the headlights. And here's the thing, I had to constantly be switching back and forth. At idle, I had to turn off my headlights so that the alternator would charge but the second I start driving, if the headlights were on and I start moving, it stops charging. So I have to turn off the headlights. So the whole time that I'm driving to wherever I'm going today, here I am doing this game of switching the headlights on and off, depending on whether the car is moving or not. 
and I had to do the same thing on the way back just to get just to make it home. So I'm like, you know what? This isn't gonna cut it. I need to figure something out. So I went to my good friend Google and jumped on some CRX forums. Someone's had to have had this problem before or a similar problem. And I ran into a comment about someone who said that on the HF, the HF model is like the most fuel efficient model out of all the CRXs, okay? So what Honda tried to do to get even more MPGs out this thing is apparently the alternator is made to like stop charging at some points just so that it could get better miles per gallon. Um, that's it to me that sounds like a very stupid uh, thing to do <laughs> hey i'm no engineer but i mean you're making things more complicated than it has to be just to squeeze out something that probably won't even be noticeable you know as far as uh, you getting those extra miles per gallon anyways we're not going to talk about that so this guy left a comment about how there is a wire that goes to the pcm dealing with the alternator and he cut the wire ever since he cut that wire he hasn't had any more issues with um you know the charging that his charging has been like rock solid so i pulled out my crx book as you can see right there i found a page that has to do with the wiring for the alternator and i just uh, made sure that all the colors are matching up and indeed they do so if we come to the green connector right there right on top of the alternator all the colors matched up so here's what i did there's four wires coming out the back of that connector and two of them have power with the key on or they just have power in general and then two of them go back to the pcm now this thing doesn't really say what they're for okay but here's the thing this guy's talking about on the forum he's talking about how there's a wire he cut right well there's two of them going to the pcm for the alternator so i figure i had a 50 50 chance right <laughs> so it was either going to be a blue and yellow wire or a white and yellow wire so i had a 50 50 chance and I decided to start with the white wire. The thing is the gauge of wire, the thickness of wire is a different gauge here from the one that goes to the PCM. So what I ended up doing to figure out which wire is which at the PCM, cause I don't have a pin out or any of this stuff. Um, I disconnected the connector off of the alternator and I disconnected the PCM from the harness. So completely disconnected it. And then I used my multimeter. Where's my multi? Here it goes right here with some very long leads. And I used one of the leads to connect to that white and yellow wire on this side. And then I went to the PCM and I just start touching every single wire until we get a beep. Of course, the meter was on continuity, you know, this one down here. So whenever it makes continuity with a complete circuit, the meter would start beeping, indicating that it's the same wire. So when I finally got that beep, I checked the wire and it was a very thin gauge wire, but indeed it was a white and yellow wire. Okay. Now here's the thing. I didn't want to go ahead and cut anything, right? I'm not, I don't like doing that. So I actually just deep pinned that one wire out of the connector for the PCM. You can see I had to take all this stuff apart. And there goes that white and yellow wire. You can see how I deep pinned it and I just got it sitting right there. So let's go ahead, start up the car and see what the car is doing as far as charging. Now that I disconnected that one wire, like I said, I had a 50-50 chance because there's two wires that go to the PCM. I didn't know which is which. I'm just taking the chance here. Let's go ahead, start up the car. 14 volts solid not moving at all no tricks or no nothing the blower motor is not on the headlights aren't on but let's go ahead and put some extra load on the alternator turn on these headlights okay headlights just turned on alternator dropped down to 13.1 but look what's gonna happen immediately it starts to climb right back up again in my book 13.4 5 or 6 that's charging in my book i am perfectly fine with that Let's go ahead and turn off the headlights and boom a solid 14 volts as you guys saw i just stopped to get gas now i got just over half a tank and uh yeah so everything's looking good i was on empty but 14 volts occasionally it drops down to like 13 and a half once i come to an idle at a stoplight uh, but the second i start driving right back up to 14 volts and honestly guys this has been the best experience because i'm driving around i've been driving it for a good 20 minutes and no anxiety at all it feels like everything is just working the alternator is just charging so i'm going to start moving right now and that 14 volts is just rock solid 
don't know if you guys can hear that that is another honda racing off every time i'm in the crx if i run into a honda this guy happened to have an eg um they just all want to race you you know what i mean that's just how it is whenever you're in a crx people just can't help themselves and obviously i'm not going to go chasing after anyone uh but <laughs> that's what i love about a crx you grab everyone's attention and I have no like range anxiety or nothing. I don't feel like it's going to leave me stranded. It's just charging the way it should be working. That's amazing. Uh, so let's go back to the garage and I'm done messing with this turd. I'm just really happy it's working. That means I don't have to get it towed all the way to our new place. This thing definitely needs a wheel alignment. I'm really uh, leaning towards taking it in for a wheel alignment before I take that drive out there because it's a pretty good drive. And the last thing I want to do is destroy my new tires, you know, over a like $80 wheel alignment. Oh, by the way, there is no check engine light for having that wire deep in from the PCM. What you guys are seeing is that's the brake light because I got my handbrake on. This is the door light because I got the driver door open and that's the seatbelt light. Obviously, I don't got my seatbelt on right now. So yeah, no check engine light. That's interesting for disconnecting that one wire out the, out the pcm so i called a few different shops in my area about the wheel alignment and once they found out that my car had like aftermarket suspension that you can adjust like camber and tow they wanted nothing to do with the car and just straight up denied me so i tried to set my own camber to around negative two degree on the front and the rear and it's pretty close you can see i use my digital gauge right there and here i'm just going to use the string method and measuring tape to get everything as close as possible and i'll just use that as my wheel alignment Since I was going to be driving a CRX to the new house, there's no sense in driving an empty car over there. You might as well take advantage of the empty space in the car and start moving boxes. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to fit as much crap as I can inside of here. And here I'm just taking some small basic tools with me. Eh, just in case. It never hurts, right? So I had two options. The first one is take the expressway and sure I would get there a lot faster. But on the downside, if the CRX decided to break down, I really don't have anywhere to go. I would just have to pull over on the side of the expressway and wait for a tow truck, which isn't very safe. The second option is to just take the regular streets all the way over there. Sure, it's going to take a lot longer, but if I were to break down, I could easily pull into like a Walmart parking lot or whatever, a auto parts store parking lot and wait for a tow truck. So I decided to play it safe and I took the long route and, uh, you know, see how it turns out. made it safely to the new house um it was pretty solid for the most part the steering was dead on at 50 60 miles per hour i could let go of the steering wheel and it would still go straight as an arrow um so the diy wheel alignment not too bad uh the voltage stood around 14 volts the entire time that i was driving right now at idle it drops down to about 12 and a half as you can see but the second i raise the rpm 
right back up to our 14 volts. All right, so I got the CRX in the garage. That's pretty much gonna be its final resting place. I couldn't go any further back because this garage is attached to the house. So those stairs leading down go into the house and as you can see, can't go any further back. As far as to the wall, I left about two feet worth of space because we're going to need to get in on this side to do work on the car. So I didn't want to get it too close to the uh, wall. But as you can see, the majority of our space is up front, okay? Now, you can see the garage, there's plenty of space left, but this is gonna be for my wife's car. She finally gets to park her car inside the garage. Doesn't have to be outside in the elements anymore. As far as my third Nissan, obviously no space inside the garage, so it's gonna have to get parked right here. Um, I'm really excited about finally having the CRX here because it's kind of a new chapter for the CRX and we could finally start working on it some more.